Hey guys, thanks for coming to check out my Mustang GT review. Unfortunately, we had a technical glitch in the making of this video. This GoPro overheated to a degree that it didn't just shut off, which does happen from time to time. It shut off and then killed the clip with it. Uh, that was a first. And I didn't realize it until I got home to look at the footage. So I couldn't recover the clip. So this video is going to look a little different from our other videos. It is missing my in-car camera. So you're going to hear me. You're going to see me driving. You're going to see the car from the outside and all those other things. You're just not going to see my pretty face yapping at you for 15 minutes, which... <laughs> depending on who you ask, might be a bonus. So enjoy my Mustang GT review. Sorry about the technical difficulties. This is going in the garbage because it can't be trusted and enjoy. Good morning, everybody. Today we are kicking it old school. No voiceover, no production. I only get a uh, couple hours with the new Mustang GT. So this is a true first drive impression. They've got me in a 2024 uh, GT Performance Pack 6-speed, and, uh, and I'm excited. The new Mustang is very exciting to me, but uh, I've brought out the notebook. We, uh, because it's such a limited thing, this is going to be uh, a bit of a, an abridged video, but I feel like it's important that you know how the new Mustang GT drives. Uh, boilerplate items, 5-liter um, V8, 6-speed MT82 manual transmission. The, the Dark Horse version will get the Tremec, but this is not that. Uh, the Performance Pack has the active exhaust, which gives you an extra few ponies. So this one has 486 horsepower and 418 torque. Uh, that's six more horsepower and three more torque than the, the regular one. Peak horsepower way up at 7250 rpm high revving motor peak torque is 4900 kind of an old school character but uh, a high revving naturally aspirated v8 is a rare thing these days and so we will take what we can get uh, the engine makes more power than before in part because of the new dual airbox dual throttle body setup great from the factory but if you want to modify it now you got to buy twice as many parts so uh there you go uh, this this six-speed manual coupe weighs 3,827 pounds. If you get the automatic 10-speed, add five pounds. It's actually a shockingly small number. The Dark Horse, in fact, weighs uh, quite a bit more, about 100 pounds more, in fact. Optional performance pack brakes on this 390 millimeter uh, Brembo six piston front, 355 millimeter Brembo four piston rear. Uh, you've got electric power steering with three modes. We'll talk about that later. We have optional magnetic shocks, which this one has. Uh, you've got uh, Pirelli P0 tires wrapped on some beautiful bronze wheels. And um, you've got fun little bits like the remote rev, although that's automatic only. The electronic drift brake, uh, which uh, feels really nice in your hands. Co-developed by Vaughn Gittin Jr. Uh, and uh, yeah, a bunch of uh, oh Fox body gauge clusters. Love that. They've really made good use of the fact that this dash is now LCD. You can configure the gauges in one, two, three, four, five different ways from regular all the way to race car to throwback. I do love that. The layout is good. These Recaro seats are good, despite the fact that they don't seem to have an adjustable lumbar. Uh, interesting tidbit with the MT82, the one to one gear is fourth. Uh, in the Tremec, the one-to-one -one gear is fifth, and in the Auto, the one-to-one -one gear is seventh. Uh, this Mustang is still available with multiple rear axle ratios, and the Performance Pack six-speed car that I'm driving has a 373. Now, let's take a drive and see how it do. Folks, this summer is insane with travel. Not only do I have to go to Europe three times in four weeks, I'm actually going on seven trips in nine weeks throughout the summer. It's insane. But you know what makes my life and Zach's life a lot easier? Carl Friedrich's all-new Carry On Pro. I have stopped 
checking bags. I only go carry on now and Carl Friedrich makes my life better. It's lightweight with the polycarbonate shell to protect all the stuff that I take with me. And this carry on pro version comes with the extra special goods, the outside pocket. It holds my laptop, iPad, phone, passport, charging cables, and all those extras I might want to get during the flight without opening the whole bag. It's strong, it's got this beautiful Vachetta tanned leather details, and, and I've locked it, how about that? It's got locks. It's got a zipperless design, pockets inside, and straps, and these super silent spinner wheels helping me get through the airport at lightning speed. I really love this thing. The features are endless. The durability is great. It looks good. It's light and it carries everything I need in a compact carry on package. So hit the link in the video description. Get one for yourself. Improve your traveling life this summer with the Carl Friedrich Carry On Pro. And thanks to Carl Friedrich for sponsoring today's video. Here we go. Dump the clutch and we're off. First vibe, engine feels and sounds great. Throttle response, great. Sound, very pleasant. seems to have worked out because it is precise, the throws are the right length, it's not grinding, and I like that. Magnetic shocks, excellent body control. We're on reasonably fresh pavement right now, but still controlling the motions well and a good balance between ride and handling, and we're in sport mode. Got the shift lights coming up on the digital dash. Like I said, Ford did a great job making use of the digital dash. Emphasizing what you can do, changing those gauges with uh, your desires. I like that. You can also get some auxiliary gauges in the center for your track use, like temperature and oil pressure and all that kind of good stuff. The throwback Fox body is good. The thing about Mustangs is they have to be whimsical, right? They have to connect you to the past. They have to have little Easter eggs like that multi-generational thing on the back window or the Fox body gauges. They have to connect you with the Mustangs of your youth whenever that youth was, right? That's also where you get things like the drift brake and the, and the uh, remote rev. It's fun little Easter eggs. A Mustang has to be about fun. Things that aren't so great. Basically no feel from the steering right now. Not getting anything there. It's very uh, digital precise. The ratio is sharp, right? You don't actually have to input much to get through that corner, but nothing coming back at me. I imagine that like regular folks will probably love it and hardcore enthusiasts will probably not. Uh, auto rev matching is present, although I have disabled it. It is easy to turn on and off. There's a programmable star button here on the dash and the Ford folks have very kindly programmed it to do that. So. Now it's on, now it's off, very straightforward. There's some construction here, so we will, we will flip around before that. Turning radius, totally decent. Clutch feel, totally decent. sitting 
up on top of the car a little bit rather than down in the car. I wish this seat went an inch or two lower and that's been consistent with the Mustang Recaros as long as I can remember back to the Boss 302 days. This is a great fast car for a newly fast driver. It's not going to have a shove of turbo like an M4 or M3 that'll jump out at you. Everything is super, super progressive. Brake feel is pretty nice. The front to rear balance is pretty nice. It's a staggered stance. The, the, uh, the fronts are a little narrower than the rears. I imagine for the hardcore enthusiasts, they may want to run a uh, square stance later. But that's the thing about a Mustang. This thing has to impress you out of the box, but it also has to be a happy medium for someone who's just going to use it as their car. Mustang can't be a hardcore focused weekend only car, at least not the GT. The GT has to be someone's only car, and so I can respect when they've put in some comfort when they've put in some softness, when they've done some things here and there that could be easily modified later if you wanted to go hardcore. This reminds me a lot of the Mach 1 that we drove a couple years ago. Obviously not the shifter because the Tremec shifter is still better. They should just put that in everything. They really should. How much more could it be? Speaking of how much, they won't tell us how much this costs. So I don't know. My guess is this thing's going to be 60 grand as it sits. And you know what? Probably still worth it. You're getting a ton here. 486 horsepower, naturally aspirated V8, really good gear ratios on the highway. It's turning between two and 3,000, so it's not lugging, it's pretty calm, but still enough to make a pass in sixth gear. The sound is very pleasant. Pedestrian. The view across the last hood was a little better. Maybe I'm just remembering the 
Shelby because that was the last one I drove. But I have to say, pretty impressed. Can't, I don't love everything about it, but as far as a usable, fast, predictable, flexible, livable sports car, this could easily be mine or someone's only car. It has a back seat. It has a decent trunk, not a huge trunk. Oh, hello, yellow Mustang. Are you looking for somewhere to turn off, sir? at a medium pace, shifting at 3,500, 4,000, cruising, it's nice. Pleasant sounds, good inputs, steering could, could use a little extra love, but the other inputs are very good. Oh no! camera has died. Well, guys, that's where I gotta end this video. The other camera died. So this was a good first drive. Uh, obviously very raw. First impressions. But uh, I'd really love to get some more seat time in the GT as well as the Dark Horse. Uh, it's very hot out here. That's why my cameras are melting. It's like over 90 degrees. It's 94 degrees right now. And because my right hand is holding the camera, I'm, I'm stuck in second gear. Can I, maybe I can cross hand it right now. And go. Um, but thanks to Ford for uh, last minute uh, getting me some seat time in this thing. I do appreciate it. And in general, I'm pretty impressed. So come over to the podcast if you want some more nuanced discussion about the 2024 GT and thank you for watching and let's uh, let's hope Ford lets me have another go sometime soon bye